This episode is sponsored by Thrive Market, an online membership-based market that is here to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. They carry everything from essential groceries to supplements to non-toxic home products. You can choose the membership that works for you, one month or 12 months. I went with the 12-month membership because it comes down to $5 per month. Join today to get 25% off your first order and a free gift. The link is in the video description. That thing's too good for me to eat alone. It's a together breakfast. Uh Ah, got it! Perfect! Check it out! It's not exactly healthy, but it's in a stack! So I guess you could say it's a balanced breakfast? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the Together Breakfast from Steven Universe. First up, for the accurate version, I have some toaster waffles headed out the toaster, an offensively named brand of crappy maple syrup drizzled liberally over top, some microwave popcorn sniffed because I can't really help myself when I make popcorn, I have to smell it, and scattered on top of and around the waffles. And honestly, I think this is a pretty good idea. I think it's going to bring some crunch to what's normally a pretty soggy waffle situation. An extra drizzle of maple-flavored corn syrup, a generous spray of canned whipped cream and after some careful contemplation, a strategically placed strawberry. And there you have it, Stephen's Together Breakfast, which contrary to its name and intended purpose, I'm gonna eat alone. And as you can probably guess, not so great. The waffles are dry and tough, the syrup tastes like sugar chemicals, and the popcorn brings some nice texture, but it needs more flavor. So I think that there are a few ways that we're gonna be able to improve this Together Breakfast. First off, of course, we gotta do homemade waffles. And I'm gonna try out yeasted waffles because I've never made them and they sound fun. First off, I'm beating together two eggs with a teaspoon of vanilla, setting that aside, and in a large bowl combining 240 grams of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon each sugar and cornmeal, one teaspoon kosher salt, and two teaspoons of dry active yeast. Tiny whisk until homogenous. And then over on the stovetop, I've got two cups of whole milk and one stick, or four ounces, of unsalted butter that I have heated to 105 degrees Fahrenheit, or just warm enough to activate our yeast. So we're gonna add that to our dry ingredients and gently fold them together, and halfway through mixing, we're gonna add our beaten egg and vanilla mixture, and then gently folding everything together until still lumpy but no streaks of egg remain. And then, since this is being leavened by yeast instead of baking powder or baking soda, we're gonna let this guy sit out at room temperature for one hour or until about doubled in size. Then optionally, you can let this guy chill out in the fridge overnight to develop its flavor. Next up, we must address our popped corn. I'm gonna make some on the stove top by heating three tablespoons of coconut oil over medium-high heat in a large stock pot with two or three kernels. Once one of them pops, we're going to take it off the heat, add a third of a cup of unpopped popped corn, cover them up, and let those come up to temperature off the heat for about 30 seconds. This is going to help them heat up more evenly and prevent scorching. Once 30 seconds are up, place it back over medium-high heat and shake constantly, using this opportunity to make funny faces at the camera, gross, killing the heat and removing the lid once you hear less than one or two pops per second, or as we call it in the industry, PPS. Evacuate the popped corn out into a large bowl and then we're going to make something that I've been looking forward to all week a maple caramel popcorn to accompany our waffles. To make the caramel in a medium saucepan, I am combining half a cup each brown sugar and maple syrup, six tablespoons of unsalted butter, and three tablespoons of water. Cooking that over medium-high heat for about 10 minutes until it reaches 240 degrees Fahrenheit, at which point we're going to add an eighth of a teaspoon baking soda and a quarter teaspoon vanilla extract. Mix that until combined, and then immediately pour over the awaiting popcorn, folding over to evenly coat the popcorn as soon as you possibly can before the caramel starts to set. As you can see, I waited a little bit too long, so I didn't get super even coverage, but we still got some pretty nice looking caramel corn, which we're going to spread out evenly on a parchment lined baking sheet and place in a preheated 300 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 20 to 25 minutes, rotating halfway through. Then all there is left to do is let it cool completely and break it up into individual pieces. And this has got to be the best caramel popcorn I've ever had. Not only is the maple really nice, but the baking soda makes the caramel super light and fragile, so it's not chewy, it just dissolves. So now it's time to try it with some waffles. We're going to prepare our waffles in compliance with the waffle iron manufacturer's specified instructions. In my case, cooking a heaping third of a cup for five to seven minutes, removing when lightly golden brown, and keeping warm in a 250 degree Fahrenheit oven on a rack set in a rimmed baking sheet. Now all we got to do is make some whipped cream. You can just whip together some sugar and cream by hand, or if you have a whipped cream siphon like this one, you can combine two tablespoons of powdered sugar with one cup of heavy cream, charge it with CO2, give it a shake, and you're off to the races. Finally, to assemble, we're going to pile our waffles into a proud stack, festoon them generously with caramel corn, drench them mercilessly with real maple syrup, available now from today's sponsor, Thrive Market, hit it with a big old dollop of homemade whipped 
cream on top of which we're going to gingerly perch our lone strawberry. And there you have it, the Babician Together Breakfast. Which is pretty good. The waffles are super light and fluffy and lacy, the caramel corn is delicious, and real maple syrup always tastes better. But altogether, I do think it's a little bit overwhelming. As much as I appreciate Stephen's enthusiasm for breakfasts that bring people together, I do think I have a better use for this caramel popcorn, and that is to mix it with some cheddar popcorn. We're just applying a whole bunch of yellow cheddar powder as soon as the popcorn is popped, otherwise it will not stick, a few generous pinches of kosher salt, and toss together to coat. Then we're going to add the caramel popcorn, and this might sound strange at first to the uninitiated, but if you've ever had a layover in O'Hare, you know that a giant tin of this stuff is how you get people together. Thanks again to Thrive Market for sponsoring this episode. Thrive Market provides its members with thousands of the highest quality, healthy, and sustainable products in grocery, supplements, home, and more. You can easily shop by 100 plus values and diets like keto, paleo, fair trade certified, non-GMO, and more. If you're concerned about the environmental effects of having your groceries delivered, Thrive Market has you covered. Your package will be delivered with carbon neutral shipping methods from their zero waste warehouses. Head to the link in the video description to sign up for a Thrive Market membership. You'll get 25% off your first order and a free gift when you join today. Thank you.